Hello and welcome everybody to our next great webinar. So today we have a special webinar because we have a partner webinar and I'm very happy that all of you are interested and thank you for joining this webinar. My name is Florian Eckele and I will guide you through this webinar today. Just for your information, we will record this webinar and we'll send it to all attendees with the recording and also the presentation. So today the topic will be will be presented by Eamon McCann from our partner CORE and hans Ulrich Madsen, Sales Director at WorkPoint. We will speak about WorkPoint and Viva. So first, if you have any questions, do not hesitate to put them into the Q&A. I will take care of them, I will promise you. And after the presentations, we have time for answering your questions. So I think it's time to start with the presentation. I, I think it is start. We will start with Hans Ulrich. So Hans Ulrich, I will send you live and then it's your turn. Thank you so much, Florian. Thank you all for, for taking the time to listen to us today for this uh, short hour. My name is Hans Ulrich. I um, am the sales director here at WorkPoint and I've uh, been very much looking forward to this, uh, to this half an hour or uh, 45 minutes that we're going to spend today. Uh, talking about uh, all the new things that are coming from Microsoft and one of the of course one of the very big things uh, is Microsoft Viva it's on everybody's lips everybody's talking about it and so we thought it would be a very very good idea to bring in one of our top leading experts in this area um, in this case uh, Eamon McCann in, in terms of uh, core uh, system technology which is one of our very very good uh, UK based uh, uh, partners that are working both closely with the work on product but also a lot with the Microsoft platform in general uh, and in specific in this case uh, uh, with Microsoft Viva. So uh, Eamon will take you through uh, some of the very good things and the pillars around Viva and we're going to talk a little bit about what is the specific bridges and gaps, what's the benefits, what's the outcome and what are some of the use cases where you can actually spend your work point solution and combine that with the uh, with, with Microsoft Viva. Um, so without further ado, uh, thank you again for, for taking the time. Um, I will be, um, be here as well uh, answering any questions in the end, but without further ado, Please, uh, please welcome and help me welcome Eamon McCann from uh, Core System Technology. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Hans. Appreciate the, the intro. Um, uh, great to join you guys on the session this morning. Um, at Core here, we've been working with Viva since the launch last year. And I think really the, the key message for, for, for our agenda today is to give an introduction to Viva, but also talk about how WorkPoint and Viva come together. Um, we've been working with partners now for multiple years, so the synergies of WorkPoint and Viva are, to me are, are, are very, very exciting. So my first kind of 10, 15 minutes, I'm going to do an introduction to what Viva is, and then we'll talk a little bit more after that about how Viva, and particularly some of the key parts of Viva come together uh, with, with uh, WorkPoint. In terms of what is what is Viva, what's it all about, um, it's, it's a really, uh, a, a groundbreaking product from Microsoft. It's a big shift in what they're trying to do and there's quite a bit to it. So I think we want to try and keep it simple today. Um, uh, there are a number of workshops that are available, which we'll talk about towards the end of the session today. But, you know, the mission statement that Microsoft have sitting around the Viva product set is quite a bold, quite quite out there as a, as a mission. You know, it's about empowering every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. That sounds pretty out there, um, but I think there's a lot behind this. Um, if you've ever had the opportunity to hear Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella speak, um, he's really pushing a massive shift with Microsoft in terms of how they operate as a business. And he's talked about how they as a business, but more importantly, their technology helps change culture of work. And he's really emphasized that Microsoft products need to be more around collaboration, learning, well-being, and, and really focusing on using technology to drive that type of experience. And this is pre-pandemic, um, but actually, you know, we've seen a huge acceleration. So Viva was a game changer in helping Microsoft achieve employee experience goals that they had. Um, Viva is really at the heart of all of that. And I think if we look, there's so many statistics that are out there in the last 12 to 18 months 
um, but the message around these statistics is, 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 is consistent and that is, you know, companies that invest in people in terms of the experience we give people um, really has a direct impact on engagement, on retention, satisfaction and ultimately the success of the company. Um, you know, the, 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 it's a bit of a, a, a bit of an overused phrase, but in the last six months we've heard the kind of this phrase certainly here in the UK about the great resignation. So employee retention, employee engagement is, is has always been important, but it's absolutely vital now. And Viva really couldn't come at a better time to help us achieve that. Um, so when we talk about what the challenges that products like Viva are trying to address or what the opportunities that Viva is trying to address, there are really six elements that yeah, a bit of research that was I personally find very interesting. I, I put the link on the bottom of the slide, um, but there are kind of four elements to the research around what made a good employee experience. Um, and some of these are pretty obvious, but I'll, it's, it's about getting the right tooling to help us achieve this. So well-being, you know, being being looked after, making sure that both kind of mentally and physically and emotionally we've got the tools and, and we've got the connectivity. And again, in the modern working world, that's really, really important. Um, in terms of connectivity, you know, integral, integral to you know, we've many of us have lost to to a large degree the water cooler moments that we had, and I know I personally miss those. Um, but technology has helped us really uh, bridge that, and Viva is again very much part of that. Um, focus um, being very much uh, around what success looks like. Um, this is an area that Viva is expanding into hugely. Microsoft have actually just acquired a new organisation. Well, end of last year, um, Ali.io which is adding kind of objectives and key results technology into the Viva suite. So this is a, a, an area that Microsoft are going to expand on very heavily over the coming weeks and months and years. Um, but for me, empowerment, the top right hand side of this is probably the area that most aligns to the conversation today to where Workpoint and Viva come together. Empowerment is about finding and creating uh, information simply and easily giving the tools that people need to do it and the resources and that's here I think there's a great marriage between Viva and Workpoint um, and certainly the tools around understanding our purpose in the organization and, and learning and development we'll talk a little bit more about learning and development shortly but a, a key element of that um, so they are the things that people are looking for in terms of employee experience in terms of how we create an employee experience the concept of an employee experience platform is a phrase that you know we're hearing an awful lot of and viva is a leader in this space yeah and you know really what is an employee experience platform um, I suppose if we look at it very simply, firstly, employees want to feel more connected. Um, how can we get the tools to get employees more connected? Leaders, um, and again, there's a lot of research available on this, but leaders are saying, how do I manage teams that are in hybrid mode? Um, and that, that old physical one-to-ones that we used to have don't exist anymore. So developing, managing, engaging employees, we need a good set of tools to help us achieve that. And frankly, for IT, they're pretty damn busy at the minute, so they want to be able to deploy this kind of technology securely and safely um, without it being a massive transformation. So there's some of the kind of key goals. Microsoft's answer to this was the employee experience platform. And Microsoft's, I think, an important point to note about what's different about Viva is employee experience is nothing new. There have been bespoke tools, tends to be connected to HR solutions. That have been out there for, for a long time. Microsoft said, how do we get all of those tools, pull them together into one framework and keep it within the tools that our customers are familiar with, the SharePoints, the Teams, the Outlooks. So Microsoft have tried to deliver Viva pretty much through the tools that you've already been using day in the out, if you're a Microsoft customer, that is obviously. So it's quite a unique way of approaching it. So when we talk about Viva and we talk about what's in it, there is there are fundamentally four pillars to the Viva product. There's actually an extra one that we'll talk about in a minute. But you know, when you when you when you deploy Viva, you, you don't have to deploy all four. You can deploy them in in the format you need. But the, from left to right, you know, are probably the, some of the key solutions that we'll see see that customers deploying. So first and foremost, Viva Connections. Viva Connections is really the heart of communication and collaboration, the gateway to the modern employee experience. So Viva Connections is a really key part of, of the product set. Um, and for me, the important part of Viva Connections from a simply technical perspective is if you've been involved in deploying an intranet, a collaboration solution using the Microsoft stack over the last five to 10 years, I'm pretty sure the conversation about should we use SharePoint, should we use Yammer, should we use Teams has always come up and what, what's the right tool and when. Viva kind of does away with that and Viva says, well, let's take those tools, put them into one 
context and let's deliver them to teams. So Viva primarily is a team solution that incorporates the best of all of the other things that Microsoft have been doing to date. So connections is almost a, a no brainer. Should you be looking at a new internet, a new collaboration solution in the Microsoft stack right now from, from kind of today onwards, the, the, the basic recommendation is use Viva connections. And, and we will come back to, I'm sure, licensing in, in a wee while, but can, the great thing about connections is that it's already in your license stack if you're an E1 or above Microsoft license. Insights is the bit that goes back to the overall bit about culture, productivity and well-being. Insights about getting some data driven information around that so that we can look at the organization and we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Topics is the bit that I think has most relevance to the work point discussion. Um, it's very near to my own heart and we'll talk about it in a small while, but topics is about unlocking knowledge. You know, we've, we, we have you know, literally being on a call with customers this morning and one, one of my customers has, has something like five or six petabytes of data in their environment. So much data, but how do we get good knowledge around that? And this is where products like Topics really come in. And finally, learning. Uh, learning, uh, and I say finally, but I think it's probably one of the key ones in here. Microsoft have really realized how learning and development can be uh, integral to the day-to-day -day engagement. So putting learning at the heart of the tools you use day in, day out. Um, and again, we'll, we'll come back to some stats on that. Um, the last product that I just want to briefly touch on, because I think it has great importance to uh, when we're talking to customers about Viva, is a product called SharePoint Syntax. It's not part of the Viva family, so it's not strictly speaking a Viva product. I'm not going to spend time on it today, but I, I will just put it out there that SharePoint Syntax, if you're looking at documents and document processing um, and document metadata, Syntax is, is really a go-to product that will allow you to get more value from those documents, and particularly for our, our WorkPoint customers. Um, you know, We believe Syntax has a huge value over own above um, adding additional kind of capability to, to the work on product set. So not one we're covering today, but it is something that we have a lot of information on and we can do follow ups if, if anybody's particularly interested in syntax and where it fits in, in the wider piece. OK, so let's let's just jump into each of the four pillars and just spend a couple of minutes on each um, uh, just to give a kind of a better understanding of what's in each of these. So first and foremost, we start with Viva Connections and Viva Connections, as I've kind of touched on already, is was was built as a solution to take the, the, the disparate Microsoft products like Weammer, SharePoint and Teams and bring them together. Um, We've actually had teasers. If you haven't used Viva or you haven't seen Viva, you probably have, you may well have seen it over the last couple of years and that things like the SharePoint home site, uh, which have been relaunched a couple of years ago now, Viva really just built on top of that technology. It adds some new cool features, but ultimately uses things like the SharePoint home site and delivers that through Teams. Um, uh, so we, we've had teasers, we've had you know, elements of this come through the product. It was last year, 12 months ago, when we got it all packaged up as Viva Connections. And Viva Connections really supplies us three things. It supplies us a brand new resourcing element, um, and resourcing really aligns to much better global navigation and personalized navigation. One of the big issues with SharePoint has been all of the different sites you can navigate. So using mixtures of, of artificial intelligence um, and a much better way of, of managing um, navigation, the resources element is a really uh, fantastic add-on as part of the Viva product set. It's really about getting you better access to regular content that you navigate, so it's quite personalized. The second part of, of Viva that's new in, 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 in connections is, is the company feed. So this is a way of, of getting company news and, 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 and collaboration content that's AI driven and, and curator driven. So it's, you, we've always had products, uh, technologies like audiencing and targeting of content in SharePoint. Now we're going to have the additional capability of AI based on what you do, what where, where you connect to, the projects you work on, the information that's important to you. Um, it will also use AI to drive news and information at you. So company feed is a brand new feature. The feature that I think is most relevant for today, and it's the third new feature, is the dashboard. And you can see an example of it on the screen here that I'm highlighting. The dashboard is a way of really bringing information from other sources into a single pane of glass. Um, and, and we'll talk about that in, in a second, but it's, it, to me, it's one of the key things. Um, on this screen, by the way, we see that uh, whilst Viva is, is very much built on, on kind of a, a full client experience, it's also been built mobile first. So here you see the dashboard and the feed and the resources kit functions that I talked about in, in, in a mobile view. But one of the key things that Viva Connections is about is targeting news, 
personalizing the, the home experience, giving you the right access to the right company events, the right information, but the dashboard. Um, so I want to spend a, just a couple of seconds on the dashboard and, and talk about what the dashboard delivers. And in particular, I think the dashboard has massive impact for, for, for WorkPoint. Um, so if you take a, 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 well, firstly, what is the dashboard? The dashboard is a set of adaptive cards on the right hand side of the screen that you saw a minute ago that allows you to dynamically connect to other sources of information, other back end systems. And Microsoft have produced a whole set of ready to go adaptive cards out of the box. And here's an example on screen of some of these. So you'll see from an information worker perspective that we have abilities to track tasks and look at tasks. So for me, here's where I think we see some really good integration with work point. If you take a classic scenario where a where you're working on an individual project. So most of us when we're working day to day are probably working on one or two cases. It might be a, a legal matter. It might be a project, but we're also working on many others. So whilst our focus might be on one or two distinct uh, pieces of work, uh, we want to know what's going on with our other projects. So the ability to pull information from WorkPoint and from other sources and display it in the dashboard to give us tasks, uh, status updates um, within the dashboard in, 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 in uh, Viva Connections means that we have one holistic view of our complete world. Um, and again, we think that's a game changer. Uh, again, it probably has to be seen to kind of understand that, but the dashboard is going to be a really significant part of where both WorkPoint and Viva come together in the future. The second part, which I'm going to briefly cover now, but it's one of the key parts of today and we will come back and show demos a little bit later on in the session this morning, is, is Viva Topics. And Viva Topics really is, you know, it's the heart of this. This is very, very near to, to my own heart. This is where we have so much information in our environment, topics about knowledge, expertise and unlocking the information that we have in the environment. If we look at our current environments, we have chats, we have documents, we have CRM systems, we have all kinds of SaaS based applications. Really, it's about trying to get information from them and at its simplest, what is topics? Topics will mine all of those. It will go out and look at all those information sources and will try and understand the themes. What are the what are the commonalities between each of those sources? And it then creates what it calls topics and creates a topic page for each of those themes. Bit hard to visualize, so I think it's really one that I should show in, in a small while so you kind of get to see what it looks like. But to me, it's a massive game changer. Some of the creation of topics and creation of knowledge is such a hard work uh, to do manually. Topics uses AI to drive that. So we'll come back and look at that in a wee while. But topics is really about solving and, 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 and aiming at a whole number of different, different scenarios. First and foremost, Topics is aimed at the knowledge worker. It's aimed at individuals and organizations that are creating documents on a regular basis, storing documents, managing documents and creating intelligence from documents. So it's really the knowledge worker where it's aimed at. Secondly, it's aimed at improving the search experience. You know, a lot of organizations spend a lot of time finding information, spend a lot of time. You know, I've worked personally in a lot of knowledge management systems where at the end of projects, at the end of cases, somebody's tasked with pulling the information out and making it available as a knowledge source. If we use topics, um, the AI, the artificial intelligence built into topics does all of that for you automatically and allows, it does 90% of the work and allows you as a knowledge manager or as a content owner to the last 10% to verify, to curate that final piece. So topics is really about pulling out knowledge automatically and making sure it's the correct type of knowledge. Um, so vast improvement in terms of how we would have to do that manually. Um, and I think ultimately it's about solving the challenge of spending hours and hours and hours finding, looking for stuff, this whole issue that we've always had for years about having to recreate information rather than grabbing information from the sources you already have. So massive game changer, and we will come back and show an example of that in a wee while. Uh, Viva Learning, I think, is a really important one for me. Uh, Viva Word Learning, you know, there, there isn't a single organization that will, will, will say that learning and, and skills aren't important. But if you look at some of the research out there, and I know the Microsoft and, and Deloitte and, and, and Burson did some research last year, um, as little as 1% of a, of a work week uh, tends to be allocated on average to, to learning and development. And, and we're well aware that it's a huge factor in, 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 in employee retention. So Viva is about saying, let's not make learning something that stands outside your day to day. Let's try and bury it in your day to day. And that's really the key point. There's a lot to learning, but ultimately it's about putting learning in the middle of, of the tools that you use day in, day out and making it part of the employee experience. Um, what I will say about learning is it, it comes in a couple of formats. Uh, so Microsoft provide 
a, 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 a call it free, but it's part of your base license. So you can use learning to, to look at sources like Microsoft Learn and, and Viva Learning, uh, sorry, Microsoft Learn and LinkedIn Learning. Um, you do need a subscription for some of the LinkedIn Learning content, but more importantly, you can connect Viva Learning to other learning sources, things like um, um, uh, uh, the Skillsoft, uh, Coursera, Plural Site. So all of these, these external sources that you may already have, you can consume the content into learning. You can also, it's not a learning management system, but you can connect it to learning management systems. So Viva provides a lot uh, as its base out of the box, but you also have the ability to connect to other systems. So lots of content providers, lots of capability. And just to give a really quick look at what it looks like, one, it's it, it's embedded in Teams, so it's an extra tab in Teams. You may already see it in your own environments. Um, you can create your own content, by the way, and, and, and link it in here. And it's a really simple interface, depending on the license you have. And again, I think we'll come back to licensing a bit la later. But firstly, as a, as a content, as a user, I can go look at content. I can kick off that content. It gives me narratable videos for that content. Um, I can stop and start and so on. I think the real key thing about Viva Learning though is the ability to share that content, share it to external users and so on. Um, and then from a management point of view is to be able to look at content, manage, allocate, assign, and then ultimately track what's going on with that content. So you can manage assignments and check who's doing what, where they are with, with training. What I will say is the management of assignments and some of the AI that's used behind that, that's in the that's in the additional licensing version of, of Viva Learning. So Viva Learning, you get some of the functionality of the base product, but the, the additional capability, the management stuff that was just on screen now, that's all part of the uh, extra license, which we will come back to a wee bit later. So the final part really of, of the Viva Suite product is, is Viva Insights. It's a very, very large product, so I'm just really going to summarize the key capabilities, but Ultimately, it, you know, employee experience, I've mentioned it several times in the call so far, you know, keeping employees engaged uh, is strong belief, happy employees are engaged employees, so it's not rocket science, but what tooling do we use? Uh, insights is really about addressing the cultural um, and, and uh, the, the well-being aspects of, 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 of our workplace, but does it from a data-driven perspective. Um, and just to show kind of at a high level, three of the key scenarios that it drives. It drives leader, manager and individual insights. And each of these are about giving individuals, managers and the organization as a whole the data to understand what's going on. Um, what I will say is the top two, uh, the leader insights and the manager insights, they are fundamentally based on an additional license. The individual insights you will already have in your license piece if you're an E1 or above. And, and at an individual level, it's as, it's as simple as things like um, schedule focus time. Um, you, you, some, you will probably see an email dropping into your mailbox, which some people love, some people not so much. But this is a cultural shift. Um, and I know personally in, in our organization, we use, we use these tools very, very heavily. But there's a lot of capability. Fundamentally, Insights is about uh, looking at the data, looking at how people are working, looking for areas of stress, looking for areas of burnout and providing recommendations. So it's not a big brother tool. It's not about micromanaging anybody, but it is about getting the data in the organization, see how people are working, and be able to provide recommendations dynamically to managers and leaders to how they alleviate and how they help people work better. So it's a, it's a huge tool. It's probably of the four, one of the bigger pieces. Um, so I'm not particularly doing it justice, but other than saying it's a key pillar of, of the product. So I'll pause for a second. That's kind of one of the key parts in, in the four main pillars. So we're going to just shift on to kind of Viva and Workpump, but I'll pause on that for a second um, and maybe hand back to you, um, Hans. Thank you. Thank you, Eamon, and thank you for your insights so far. I mean, we, uh, thank you for all the questions coming in, and I think uh, one that might be uh, sufficient here is if you can give some kind of use case into how uh, Viva and Workpoint are being used or can be used in organization, if you make it like uh, a little bit more concrete on on uh, on, on the Workpoint Viva part bit. Yeah, I, I think looking at what's happening in, in both pilots and POCs for us right now and looking at, you know, so if we summarize kind of what I've shown so far, there are four parts of the product. There is connections, topics, learning and insight. Insights really, in my personal view, from a practical what we're seeing doesn't have a particular connect to what we're doing with Workpoint, but the other three products have to different degrees. So Viva Connections, I think this is evolving uh, right now from what we're seeing. So it's 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 a work in progress. 
But I think there's monstrous opportunity, as I alluded to a little bit earlier, to make sure that the Workpoint UIs and the Viva Connection UIs are brought together, and in particular, the dashboard. So tasks that are driven uh, directly from Workpoint, the ability to surface those tasks in a single pane of glass. So all of the tasks from all of my different cases, be they projects, be they document management cases, be they matter management, HR management, contract management, all of the key things that Workpoint does day in, day out generates a lot of, of, of tasks and information. So driving those directly in, into, into connections is, is again a game changer. And we hear that time and time again. How do we get control on the full landscape? So connections we think is, is going to have a, a big impact, but that's evolving. The bit that's there now, and that I think is probably the most critical piece, is Viva Topics. Viva Topics really, if you look at the two sides of it, the key strength for Workpoint is the fact that it brings structure. Um, it brings key structure, how you do day to day operational work. Um, so the cases that I just mentioned, contracts, those kind of key things. So Workpoint delivers operational efficiency. But what do we do with all the information that's within the Workpoint store? And that's where Viva Topics brings the knowledge. So I think the marriage of, of Workpoint with all of its document stores and all of the data it stores and Viva topics to add real knowledge and search capability. You put those two together, it's it's frankly dynamite. So that, that's kind of where we see them coming together. Viva Learning, I think really just as a repository to support adoption of Workpoint in general is a really good source, particularly the, the free E1 license based. So whilst it's not a direct integration, it just supports the work we do. That makes sense, Hans? Perfect, thank you. That makes a lot of sense, yeah. Cool. And I think it's probably, you know, it's probably worth just spending a couple of minutes just jumping back and, and talking about Workpoint and, and some of the areas of Workpoint that, that come together with, with Viva to kind of extend that question. And then uh, I'll finish with a, a brief demo of, of topics as well, just to kind of show the product in action. So when we look at Workpoint, um, you know, and we look at the kind of conversation I'm having so far, um, the heart of the modern working experience is the workspace and, and Office 365 as a family of tools has been out there now for a long time. For us, what Workpoint does is it glues this together. I mean, I've said it already in the, uh, on the session this morning that um, one of the key challenges that we hear time and time again is almost there's too many tools within the Microsoft stack, which one should we use when? So making that simple, making it more aligned to working practices, that's what Workpoint does. It putting, it's putting structure to working practices and processes. Uh, I think what's changed in the last 12 months is Microsoft have also brought Viva to the equation. So Viva is about consolidating products. Workpoint is about consolidating and orchestrating those products. So put the two together and we just have a much more streamlined way of making people work. The technology is really cool, but actually day to day people have simple needs. They want to open documents, use documents uh, and manage um, activities within the documents they store. So the tools coming together, we think is, is a really uh, a cool way that, that Viva and Workpoint complement each other. I think the other second point is about structure. Uh, SharePoint and I personally and, and Core have been working with, with, with uh, SharePoint now since almost the get go. Um, and it's been used over the years as a platform to build out a line of business solutions. It's kind of one of its key strengths, it's modular, but actually it's probably one of its key weaknesses too, because the more complex you deliver a solution, um, using kind of custom configuration, the more costly and more time consuming it gets. SharePoint is very adaptable, but actually the more you adapt, the longer the project gets. So for us, it makes total sense to use Workpoint um, to mitigate that complexity and just deliver a solution out of the box. And the quick win, as you see on screen, is what Workpoint gives is a very flexible architecture and structure out of the box. Um, the hierarchy is very flexible. The relationships between entities is very flexible. Um, and that's a really key issue when, when, when trying to manage multiple entities in a SharePoint world, multiple different types of, 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 of cases. Workpoint does that out of the box. It makes life really simple for us. But how does that kind of come together when we talk about Viva? And when you, when you bear it down to its kind of bare bones, Really, when we're talking about Viva and Workpoint together, we're talking about knowledge. And so for us, Workpoint supports the creation of knowledge and the saving of knowledge. It's it's the repository. It's the seamless business repository on top of Viva and SharePoint. But Viva and Workpoint together come together to get, help us really find that knowledge and share knowledge. So that's really where Viva and Workpoint for us come together. Um, and, and one of the comments that, you know, when we were talking as a, as a joint team, um, Viva topics particularly uses AI, um, so uses artificial intelligence to work out um, 
it's pretty clever technology. It will do what it needs to do. It, it will mine the content. It will kind of dig into your content. But the more structured that content is, the better the quality comes out of, of, of the AI tools. So Workpoint as a structure gives Viva Topics a really nice framework to work from. So putting the two together, the best together type view, we think is essential. I think my final kind of note on the Workpoint kind of integration piece is fundamentally, if you look at Workpoint, it really is a collection of accelerators um, and vertical solutions. Um, and these solutions really are about building out certain acceleration uh, out of the box, sometimes in days, and then extending those with the wider 365 technology you may have like PowerPoint, uh, sorry, Power Apps um, and the Power Platform. So for us, it's a no brainer. Why risk building these solutions manually when actually these are templated solutions that are in the box ready to go and Viva can sit on top of this with connections and topics enhancing the capability. Um, I've mentioned Viva topics um, quite a bit and it's, it, to me it's kind of the key area. What I'd like to do now is just briefly jump in and show a quick demo of topics to show what topics is uh, and kind of give, give, give the power of topics. So firstly, let me just pop open my browser. Uh, uh, right, let's go here. So just to give a quick view of what is a topic and how you even see topics in the Microsoft world. So here I'm in, in a SharePoint site. And just very briefly, um, it looks like a, st a standard kind of content article in SharePoint. But if I hover on this underlined word, what you'll notice is a pop up. Um, and this is something called a topic card. So this environment has the AI, the, the artificial intelligence engine that, that sits in topics, has spent a couple of weeks working through all the content and it's, it's created some, some topics. So firstly, we have this thing called a pop up. This pop up gives me a bit of information about something called digital service initiatives. So it's telling me people who know about this and it's telling me some other information and documents. If I click on the link, it will actually open up the topics card. So this is a topic card. So through the, through the AI, um, topics has worked out that there was something in my organization called a digital service initiative. And it's worked out that these are the people that are the subject matter experts for it. And it's worked out that these are the documents that most relate. It's also worked out that these are the sites that might be of use. So if I am interested in digital service initiatives, these are the people I should be speaking to. These are the documents I should be looking at. And these are the sites that might be of relevance. And these sites, documents, people, they could be in all parts of my business. It's pulled them into one topic page. Just as a quick aside, I can edit, if I'm the right type of user, so if I'm a knowledge manager in the organization, I can edit this. And this is very much what Microsoft wants. They want the AI to build out the initial concept, but that for knowledge managers to curate that and like the content. And the more the content is liked, the more it becomes available in search. So I, I won't make any changes to that, but just show you that that's something you can do. So that's what a topic card looks like. If I go back to, um, if I go back to that page, how do I use topics? How do I make them? How do I interact with them? So firstly, if I just edit this page, like I'm writing a new new article or I'm updating this article, if I want to embed a topic, um, it's as simple as using hashtag. So when topics is enabled, if I hit hashtag, it will bring me back a list of relevant topics. So I'm going to include the operational account uh, accountability review as a, a tag and I'm going to republish this page. Um, so that's a quick example of me doing it in in uh, in, in a SharePoint page. Um, this functionality will be in Teams and it will be in uh, Office and all the Office products, and that's releasing kind of over the coming months. Um, but again, just to highlight, if I if I highlight the operational account review, if I click on it, it will now show me the topic card for this piece of information. And again, this is information throughout the complete organization brought into one uh, topic card. Uh, to show the Teams experience, by the way, really briefly, um, and this is uh, this is a mock-up because this experience is is uh, is being worked on by Microsoft behind the scenes. It's it's in preview at the minute. So if I go to the next page, this is what it will look like in Teams. So again, you'll have a hyperlink. We'll be able to select the hyperlink and look at the topic card, just like I did in in SharePoint. We'll be able to look at the details list, just like I did in SharePoint. But in this case, I'm now doing it all of it completely within Teams. The one feature I particularly like, and I think this is a really nice benefit of, of, of the solution that we've delivered to Teams and, and, and Viva uh, Topics, is we have the Ask a Question feature. And in this particular example, we've included Topics as one of the respondents. And what in this instance, what Topics has done is said, actually, 
I know what you're asking the question about. I'm going to actually direct this question to the right people using my topics information. So it's trying to use artificial intelligence to even as you ask Q&A questions to guide questions in the right area. So it learns as it goes. And um, so this kind of Q&A feature, how do I do something in a business? These are very, very key features on entrance and home pages. Topics will now drive it so the value of the information coming back is much stronger. So that's what it looks like in Teams. I think if I if I just subtly change to what I think is probably the the final bit. There's a lot more to topics around how you manage topics, create topics. I'm not particularly going to cover that in this session today, but what I will cover is um, if I pop back to the demo is how does this look like from a getting information out of SharePoint and, and, and two key areas that I think are worth showing. Firstly, if I show search, SharePoint search is a much talked about uh, feature and, and people say you know, we need to improve upon what the what SharePoint does. Um, Workpoint for me has some fantastic search capabilities. What Viva Topics adds on top of that is something like this. So for example, if I search for the word Titan, so I know I've got a project called Project Titan in here, so I know that, but the uh, another person may not. So if I search for Titan, when Topics is enabled in your in your Microsoft world, you now get a topic card at the beginning of your search. So we'll put topics at the beginning of the search. And I, just like I could in, in, in other parts of, of, of SharePoint, I can select this and we'll open up the topic card. So now when I search for Project Titan, I'm getting a much more directed search and it's the knowledge around Project Titan, not just random documents, it's curated knowledge around Project Titan that's coming back. Um, and again, a huge source of information. I think the next section, um, that I want to look at is, is actually where we're embedding topics throughout just your day to day products. So if I open up a quick Word document to show you an example of how topics is now even embedded in something like Word. Um, so here I have a Word document. If I kind of scroll down um, in a typical, here's one I prepared earlier. Um, so we have some goals in here, but I can see we have the project Titan is listed as some of the content in here. If I right click and search for Titan, so this is right within Word, I will get back a load of sources of information about Titan, but what you might notice is the third source that Word is now bringing back is actually this icon tells me that this is a this is a topic within my business. So again, if I select that, it will open up the project topic. So search and topics and Workpoint coming together really as a simple way of storing information, simple way of creating knowledge around that information, and probably more than anything else, a really nice way of getting back to that information. That I think is probably one of the key things that uh, Viva and, and Workpoint do come, coming together. So Hans, at this point, I think I'll, I'll pass it back to you for, for Q&A. Thank you so much, Eamon. Um... And thank you all for, for all the questions uh, coming in. I think we will we will start from uh, from a beginning. I mean, we we I think we are all maybe uh, talking a little bit. Maybe this is about the, the history of, of, of Microsoft. But uh, a lot of us know Microsoft 12 already. Uh, is Viva uh, taking over for that uh, for for that uh, for that program, or, or how do you think? How do you see that? From from Delve, yeah, yeah, Delve is a very interesting product. Some some people use it really extensively. I mean, Delve, Delve fundamentally, Viva Topics, you can argue, has kind of um, evolved and derived from Delve. So some of the capabilities that were in Delve, you'll now see in Viva Topics. Delve is a deprecated product though, so um, they've stopped stopped support for mobile versions of Delve, and we will see Delve disappear. I'm not sure if it's an official date. I think for me though, the key difference between Delve and Topics is if you use Delve, and, and I personally use Delve, so I think it's a great product, Delve, the, the center of the world in Delve is the person. So you can look at a person, see the documents they're working on. You can highlight a person. What, what Topics does on top of that is it focuses on the, the knowledge. It focuses on the topic area and it brings people and documents together. So in, in summary, it's kind of, it's Delve on steroids. It's it's the evolution of Delve and it's the AI capability. So Delve is still in there somewhere, but Topics is, is a much more advanced version of that. Okay, thank you. I hope that answered the question. And I think it, I think maybe if, uh, one for me as well. So so Viva is that for for anybody in in uh, in the organization? Um, you think? Yeah, it, it's an, it, I think it's a really interesting question because if you look at it from a, if you look at it from a, the four parts of the product, I think Viva Connections, absolutely in my views for everybody in the organization, it's part of your license, um, depending on your license, but it's most likely in the vast majority of our customers have the right licensing for connections. So I think Viva Connections and learning 
they're the two parts that I think is just it's a kind of a no brainer. Um, and, and in fact, Microsoft launched learning into almost every single Microsoft tenant anyway. So it's there. You almost have to turn it off rather than turning it on. So Viva Learning and Connections, absolutely. Analytics is, is, is a huge tool. Uh, so Viva Analytics is not for everybody and it's not for every organization. Um, so there are, you know, for example, Microsoft recommendation is you need at least 500 users in, in your tenant, in your organization to actually get, let analytics do get, get the kind of data that it needs to do its thing. We have seen it working slightly smaller, but 500 or above is Microsoft recommendation. So can, analytics less so. And topics, I think absolutely any organization that has knowledge worker and documents um, are kind of missing a trick by not having um, uh, Viva Topics. And that's where I think, you know, frankly, you and I, Hans, have had many conversations on this. This is where Viva Topics and Workpoint come together. You know, if, if you're a document-driven organization, a knowledge-driven organization, Topics and uh, Workpoint just are, are a no-brainer. Yes, and I think we also touched upon the benefits of, of combining Workpoint with, uh, with Viva uh, in general. So thank you for that, uh, Eamon. That was one of the questions as well. Um, now we, we we touched about a little bit about the licensing around Viva. Um, how, can can you touch upon that a little bit? Um, what's included? What's not? Uh, how does uh, it look from a from licensing perspective? I do I do have a slide on that, and, and it's probably one for more oh. offline because I could spend twenty minutes on this alone. I I think the quick summary is um, there are kind of if I kind of work through this table, Viva connections is. A free license and by free we mean you if you have an e1 license or above you'll have viva connections and there are no additional licensing needed for viva connections so viva connections is pretty much free you get everything out of the box you're good to go viva learning uh there is a there is a free e1 and above version but to get to the manager to get to the uh, ability to sign and manage those courses like i showed a bit earlier you do need the additional license and that's a three uk licensing at the minute uk pricing that's three pounds per user per month viva insight you also get an initial free version which is the user insights the individual insights if you want the manager and leader insights that's an extra three pounds per user per month. Um, and finally, Viva Topics. Probably for me, this is a little bit disappointing piece of I'm being honest. Viva Topics is a license full stop. Um, so to have Viva Topics, you need, so it doesn't really matter whether you're an E1, E3 or E5, you do need the per user per month license, which is again, three, three user per month to, to enable Viva Topics. Um, there are variations to how many people you may want to license. Maybe that's a little bit outside this conversation. I think the final comment I would say is Microsoft have launched, they've recognized that you know, customers most likely will probably want all functions. So they have come up with a license called the Viva Suite license. And that's again, UK pricing is six pounds 80 per user per month. So it's effectively all of these three licenses bundled into something called Viva Suite. So if you hear the phrase Viva Suite or you see an article about Viva Suite, it's actually a license that takes these three licenses and bundles them into one license for a set amount. So there's quite a good reduction. And most, a lot of our clients are looking at the Viva Suite license as a good way of getting all three of these extra functions. Perfect, perfect. And thank you. And then I think what we are also uh, just conscious of time here that uh, how do we, if I, uh, I'm watching this. How do I get started with uh, would work on Viva uh, or just Viva in general? Yeah, well, from course perspective, we're working very. There's so many routes, but it's one of the first key things is is understanding how what it does and how it how it does it. So Microsoft themselves have launched. There is something referred to, and I'll just move a slide and call the the Microsoft Cloud Accelerator Program. Um, so this is a set of workshops that are about understanding the components that are in Viva, and more importantly, very quickly building a use case for where Viva and frankly where Workpoint fit. Um, so the Microsoft Cloud, Cloud Acceleration program is an art of the possible program. It's delivered across three days. I think the really important part of this program is that in, in the vast majority of cases, Microsoft actually fund. So depending on your licensing, Microsoft will fund it. Now we do have customers that we deliver this engagement um, uh, outside the Microsoft funding, but the end result of the, of the engagement is a delivery plan for what parts of Viva are relevant to an organization and how to deploy that into the organization. Thank you. Thank you for clearing that up. Um, yeah, so basically how easy is it to get from A to B um, from a from a project point of view? Uh, so like for a customer that wants to move, what are the timeframes that you are typically seeing when you uh, engage with a customer organization here? I, I think that's a really interesting question because what, 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 struck, what struck us about 
Viva and, and uh, we're actually here in the UK. We're the launch partners with with a number of customers with Microsoft. And, and what we've worked out is Viva is not a day. Viva could be a one month, 12 months, 24 months, could be years worth of implementation, but it's important to get the base framework out there. So we, in conjunction with the Microsoft, the Microsoft team here in Microsoft UK, we worked with Microsoft about six months ago. And between us, we came up with something we call the Viva Suite Quick Deploy. And this quick deploy, um, again, just to give, give it some context, is about delivering the key elements of all four products up and running out of the box within a relatively tight time frame. So within two to four weeks, we've basically got all four products deployed based on, on the framework that was agreed maybe in the pre-workshop stage. So for us, a base implementation of Viva Suite, um, including connections, fully configured, available, is about a one month window. Um, what we then do, we work with customers to extend that, and that's where when we extend, we, we use products like Workpoint. So I think the summary is, we're working here in the UK with, with Microsoft on something we call the Viva Suite Quick Deploy. Microsoft are actually helping to fund with some customers, so that's uh, using Microsoft's eSIF. can never remember what that, acronym stands for the ECIF, but it's a Microsoft funded program. So Microsoft are helping fund this for some of our customers, some of the kind of larger deployments, but it's a program that we're using um, with multiple customers right now here in the UK. So if you could sum up uh, just one more time in terms of what is the ideal outcome? I mean, we, uh, you and I like to talk about outcomes for, for, for the clients and organizations that we are, we are assisting with, with WorkPoint and of course in this case Viva as well. Um, but what would you say is the outdoor, uh, ideal uh, outcome for, um, uh, for an organization uh, to go down this road? Yeah, I, I could be very cliche and say happy users, but I kind of I, I really mean that. I, I, you know, twelve months in, when we've looked at customers who've really deployed topics and, and some of the key products, the making making life easier for an end user to do their job. Um, but, you know, being really getting away from rework, tapping into the knowledge you have. We're working on a, on a fairly large pilot with an organisation that's a, a, a management consultancy. Um, in fact, we're working on a number of management consultancies, but we've deployed it into one of their teams. Um, and just watching the feedback, then, the outcome, the feedback that's coming back. One particular example, um, the team we're working with, they, they work on mergers and acquisitions and they do prospect documents. Um, and they're working on, on, on a semiconductor uh, uh, organisation that they were involved in a merger on. And we asked them to use topics to see what value they would get from it. And just using the base interface, firstly, they were shocked is probably the word when they found that one, uh, the AI tools within topics have created the topics under semiconductors. They were really surprised by the value of the connections, the, the number of people, the, the subject matter experts that they just didn't think were were, 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 were were even available to them. And more importantly, that all the key documents they needed to work on on the project were there. So for me, the outcome was watching that type of experience that six, 12 months into a deployment that actually people are getting to information, they're creating content easily, and they're not reworking and reinventing every single time. That's been a Nirvana that we've talked about in Knowledge Work for, for 10 years plus. Work with Viva, Workpoint and Viva Topics in particular, we see that coming to a reality. That's the outcome we're striving for. Um, we also had, a, a, I think, a final question here around if you can supply some examples on how to create Viva Connection dashboard cards uh, targeted to Workpoint. Um, on the top of it, that this might be a, a follow up, maybe. But uh, yeah. could you, yeah? Well, on the follow up on that, we we do on on on, on Core's website. Um, uh, so the, we we do. We, I, I could be wrong, but I'll check offline and maybe I'll, I'll pass it on to you guys. But we do have a uh, on-demand webinar that shows how you build some of those adaptive cards. So we um, and uh, we also run one-to-one, -one, one-hour sessions where we can go through the two different mechanisms of kind of low-code and, and not so low-code way of creating those cards. So, the best of my knowledge, we have an adaptive cards uh, on-demand webinar that that's available. We'll find the link and send it on. And then, secondly, we if if of interest, we're more than happy to to our team to do kind of a uh, it's a one-hour one-to-one, and we kind of go through the basics end to end of. It doesn't cover everything, but it covers the big concepts of how you create those cards and, and how those cards can be can be implemented. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, if there is any uh, 
final questions, I think we actually covered uh, covered the ones that were there. So thank you for asking all these uh, great questions, uh, and I hope you all got the answers you needed. Uh, we'll just let it stay for for, for a couple of uh, twenty seconds here. I think there's a delay on 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 the questions coming in, but please let us know if you have any questions. And otherwise, thank you so much for for spending your your time with us here today. Um, 50 minutes and uh, we will be back with everything from the presentation, the recording and if you have a need to to uh, for us to set up a one-to-one a -one or a call as mentioned before by Eamon, we are mostly uh, most happily to, to, to do that as well. So um, I'll just let it sit just for a second and if there's no more other questions, have a very, very nice day and thank you so much. Thank you so much Eamon for, for taking the time as well too. Today. Appreciate it, um, Hans and Florian. Thank you.